Uh, so, you can read the preamble. Okay. Cleveland Board of Building Standards and Appeals, the preamble in compliance with the notification requirements of Ohio's open meeting law under COVID-19 emergency declaration. Notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in a participant's panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Um, the all meeting activity is being recorded by way of the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed by way of YouTube. We have provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak in a particular case by way of our website and email. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comment on a particular matter. There you go. Uh, board of Buildings, the Building of PLC. Hold on just a moment. Ms. Dorsey, please mute your microphone. That's where she would be, right? Thank you. Are we ready? Yes. Uh, Board of Building Standards and Building Appeals is now in session. The uh, first docket, docket A8020. Oh, Joe, call the roll. roll. There you go. Call the roll. Please call the roll. Mr. Maskey? Yeah, here. Mr. Bratley? Here. Mr. Dink? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. We have Preliminarily, a Mr. Chairman, Patricia McGinsey asked in City of Cleveland Law Department, as we do each time, the city objects to the use of the chat function based upon the Ohio Supreme Court rules for um, uh, remote video conferencing. And as also, if we could have uh, someone independently verify that it is being live streamed, that would be what Maurice usually comes on and says. So whoever's playing Maurice, if you could verify to the board that it is currently being live streamed. Sure. This is Joe Straubin with City Planning Commission. Uh, we are live on YouTube right now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, first docket, A8020-4809 Lorraine Avenue. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is exterior maintenance issued February 6, 2020. Appeal statement received March 6, 2020, requesting for 60 days to abate the violations. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Ashton Law. With the appellants as present for docket A8020, please state your name. Attorney Gary Fishman here for uh, Reina Tercios Ruiz, the trustee. Also, I want to tell you that I do not have a raised hand application on my screen anymore. Thank you. Also, I'm going to read into the record an email from Councilman Gary McCormick. He opposed to this appellant having any more time extension to abate the current conditions of the property. Mr. Dean, please swear everyone in. Now we swear or affirm the comments you're about to make that the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. Okay. May we hear from the attorney? Uh, yes. I would also like the panel to know that uh, uh, Reina Tercio Ruiz is with us also, and I'd like her to be sworn in as well. 
Is she on? I am on. Please? This is Dr. Okay. Chris. Yes. Solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Okay. Proceed. All right. Thank you very much. May it please the panel. Uh, this building is in the process of being sold. Uh, the person who was managing the building is local to Cleveland. She is uh, the mom. She is 78 years old, and she is on dialysis. So she hasn't been in a very good condition to do much uh, over the last year. The uh, trustee who is more in charge and who is with us is Reina Tercios Ruiz. Uh, she is a medical doctor, and she is uh, joining us today from Atlanta. She works with the Center for Disease Control, and she has been very busy over the last year. And I understand that time is an issue. Uh, again, the building is being sold, and we would like uh, the opportunity to take time to uh, sell the building. I was hired for this matter 48 hours ago. I, I drove past the building 24 hours ago, and th there's no question that it is in bad condition. Uh, as you uh, are aware and as you noted, uh, an appeal was filed about 11 months ago requesting more time. Uh, the building, uh, again, there are proposals. We hope to have the building uh, sold within about 30 days. It is contiguous to a a church and or school. Uh, I'd also like to uh, comment that uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Rena Tercios Ruiz received three notices from the city. They were all postmarked the same day and they all came on the same day and one was marked as a final notice. Uh, all were received, if I remember correctly, either January 11th or January 14th. Uh, a few weeks ago. When you say that it's being sold uh, and, and you're saying you, you want 30 days, is, is it in process of being somebody, is somebody seeking financing or is it is it actively on its way? Raina, uh, could you please uh, address the panel on that issue? Certainly, sir. The There is a sale contract in the process of being developed, I expect it to be in my inbox within the next 24 hours. Part of the stipulation is that closing occur within 30 days. Uh, the contiguous neighbor is in a much better position to handle the condition of the building than the current owners. And the sale is to that contiguous neighbor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vanover. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I can if I can back up to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, um, Fishman, um, the, uh, the what were the notices for that you said you received? She had received. Uh, Raina, you're probably in a better position to uh, answer that than I am. The notices. Uh, I believe they were hearing. notices regarding this hearing. Am I correct, Raina? That is correct. Okay, so so those were just announcements to the fact that this hearing was taking place, not regarding the violations themselves. Um, so, okay, Mr. Chairman, um, as we always do, um, more time to dispose of a property uh, is not an adequate reason for an extension. Uh, this is a this is a beautiful building, or was. Um, the architecture of this building is very specific to this portion of Lorraine Avenue. Uh, and these, uh, these issues that we're looking at, um, there's multiple property, uh, you know, exterior maintenance issues. And this didn't happen over the past year when everybody was so busy with, you know, the pandemic and everything else. This is, this building's been neglected for a long time. Uh, and there's been plenty of time to, in my opinion, to facilitate a sale to a beneficial owner years before it got into this condition. Um, it's unfortunate that the neglect of this building has put it in this condition because, um, you know, who knows? I don't know what the, the, the new owner, the contiguous owner's plan is 
Uh, but as a being in a landmark district, you know, I don't know what their expectation is um, going forward. So we would ask that no more time be allotted. There was plenty of time to fix it over the past decades um, and then plenty of time to sell it. And as we've all seen, the the climate has changed, you know, as the economic climate often does. And there's no guarantee that this is actually going to go forward. It's really a plan to do nothing but get rid of the property. All of those things can continue to happen if you remand it, if you give no more time and remand it back to the city. Um, so we will continue, you know, they can continue with their sale um, of the property, but an extension of time stays enforcement by the city to do our job. Okay, board members. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I had my hand up. Um, Mr. Chairman, to the appellant, is the neighbor that you allude to, is that the um, community school that's adjacent? Are they the folks that you have an agreement with? That is correct. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I concur with Mr. Vanover and the city. Um, I think urban community school is the right owner for probably taking over this property and they have a very good track record of maintaining property and working with the city to to improve their property and to put new buildings on Lorraine. And if we remand this back to the city and this transfers within the 30 days that the owner thinks it will, then Urban Community School will work with the building department and go through the necessary process to bring this building back to life. And if it doesn't work out with Urban Community School, then the property will be in the proper hands of the city, and then we can proceed from that point forward. So I think either way, it, it's the best way to handle this property. I'm very familiar with it. I live in this neighborhood. I've driven by this for multiple decades, and it's a horrible eyesore to a part of the community that's really rebounded on the rain between 45th and 65th, and this is one of the worst properties. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Gaffer. you have a Mr. comment? Mr. Chairman? Yeah, I, I agree totally. Uh, wondering uh, to Carmela, is there any word uh, from the council person uh, on this property? Yes, yeah, I think uh, there is. Yes, Councilman Terry McCormick opposed to any extension of time. Um, they also, as an agreement with you all, seeing that it has been an eyesore for the past decade and nothing has been done. Okay. I think we've heard enough. Uh, a motion, and, and the property seems like it's heading in the right direction, either way. Uh, a motion is ordered to deny the appellant additional time and to remand the property to the vision of building and housing for supervision and any required further action. Motion so in order? So moved. Second, Mr. Maskey. Second. Second, Mr. Gallagher. Call the roll, please. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Thank you all. Next docket. Uh, we thank the panel for its time. Thank you, Luke. Uh, next docket, A6620, 19112, Furwood. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is interior and exterior maintenance. October 22nd, 2020. Good morning, Attorney Christina Lauder here. My second, please. Sorry. Appeal statement received November 13th, 2020, requesting for time to abate the violations. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Ashton Law. With the appellants for docket A6620, please state your name for the record. Attorney Christina Lauder. Solemnly swear, solemnly swear or affirm the comments you are about to make are the truth, the whole truth, 
So help you God. Yes, I also have my client here uh, listed under Suzanne Davlin. Will they be giving testimony? Uh, I think her husband, uh, Robert Davlin, who is the owner, may give some testimony. So, yes, he should be sworn in as well. Okay. Uh, solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make of the truth, the whole truth, not anything but the truth. So, help you, God. I see that they're still muted. Um, Mr. Dale, well, are you able to unmute yourself? Okay. Proceed with the discussion. And, and, yes. Uh, um, my, my client indicates to me that he has completed all of the repairs at the property. Uh, what we need to have happen at this time is for the inspector to come out and review the property and make sure that he is comfortable with the repairs. So at this time, we would ask for another 30 to 60 days just to complete the um, inspection, uh, reinspection, and, and then to make any additional repairs if the inspector feels that uh, what has been done is not adequate. Okay. Uh, any comments from uh, Mr. Vanover? Do you have a comment on this? Um, so, Mr. Mr. Chairman to Ms. Davis, the uh, the screen before us says that it's a condemnation of the main structure. Is that accurate? I've never seen any kind of condemnation. I've just seen a standard violation repair list. One second. The condemnation should be cited on the repair list. Yeah, it should just be interior and exterior maintenance. All right. So let the so, so just let the record show that the screen that we're currently looking at that notes that as a condemnation notice is inaccurate. It's interior, exterior maintenance. Um and Mr. Chairman to the appellate, do you, uh you have a contact number for the inspector Arnold, who's the inspector on this? Attorney Christina Oh, I'm sorry you said Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, Mr. Devlin, are you, do you have a contact number for the inspector? I know it's listed on the um, the initial uh, violation list. As long as it's the same inspector, then we should have the phone number. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, we don't object to 30 days to get the inspection conducted and um, the violation notice closed out. Okay. A motion is in order to grant the appellant until March 15th. 2021 to complete abatement of the violation. Motion so in order? No move. Motion, Mr. Bradley? Second. Second, Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Maskey. Call the roll, please. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Stink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next hearing, A7420-3443 East 51st Street. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is condemnation of the main structure. Issue January 7, 2020. Appeal statement received February 3rd, 2020. Requested nine months to abate the violation. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Ashton, Law. The appellant has been properly notified, and I do not presently see them here. Hello. Are you the appellant okay. for docket A7420? Solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, so help you God. I do. We do. <laughs> but the, the appellant proceeds with your discussion. The Mr. Appellant. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes? I also want to give a statement from Councilwoman Cleveland. She opposed to this appellant giving any more time. She states that this appellant owns several properties throughout the city of Cleveland that are in the same condition. She feels that this appellant is doing a disservice to the city. Objection noted. We can proceed. Is the appellant present? Hello. Hello. Yes. 
Yes. yes. Introduce yourself. Are you Eli? Uh, Eli. So, no. I'm Eli's son, and my father's next to me. Say so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. I'm Eli. He needs to be sworn in. I, I think he. Yeah, but solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, so help you guys. I do. I okay. Do. Proceed. Give us your story. Uh, we just haven't had time. Uh, we applied for this application a while ago. We haven't heard any results. Uh, we want, we're like to get some building permits so we could continue working on the house. And, and okay, so and then what? When you get the permits, how much time are you requesting to complete abatement of the violations? Six months. Okay, Mr. Vanover, you have a comments. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, there's no permits applied for currently. Um, this was uh, condemned early in 2020, um, pre-pandemic. So, uh, you know, if you can look at the condition, this is uh, it, it, this, this house has been neglected for some time. Um, this will require full building, uh, electrical, plumbing, and mechanical permits to uh, bring this property out. It looks like the wiring has all been stripped. The siding has been stripped. Um, I don't understand. You know, if we were if we inspected a year ago, there's a reasonable expectation that it was in this condition prior to. Um, all right. Although we want to see properties rehabbed as opposed to demolished, I uh, we wouldn't object to a reasonable amount of time, I suppose. But based on the councilwoman's uh, comments and ours, I don't understand how the property got to this condition to begin with. Then it was vandalized in a short period of time, and we did not get to it after we found out what was wrong with it. Then after that, the inspector showed up. Mr. Chairman, to... Patricia McG Mr. Chairman, Patricia McGinty, yes, in City of Cleveland Law Department. Mr. Chairman, to the appellant, when, when did you receive these, these notice of condemnation? I received it, uh, we received it a, a while ago. We, we applied for the appeal, and we never got a response from the appeal. And all of a sudden, we got this uh, three letters at one day, at one time. Okay. Out. That's based upon the post office slowdown. That's out of the control of either the board or its secretary. They had no control over that. But, Mr. Chairman, to the appellant, have you done anything at the property since being, receiving the notice? Yeah, we started working on the inside and cleaning it up. And did you pull any permits? Uh, we didn't do anything with uh, uh, permits yet. We're just and Mr. Out. Chairman, this, to the to the appellant, is the councilman correct? You own other you own other properties in the city of Cleveland as well. Yes. Okay, and uh, so you are a property owner and aware of the process, Mr. Chairman. If you are inclined to um, grant time, we ask it to be a very very short time with very strict limitations, such as no extensions, no further times. Um, uh, uh, they do know what they're doing. They're property owners in the city of Cleveland, but you do have the right to give them a short period of time. They have, it has been sitting there for the last year. The community has had to, do, had to see this eyesore, but we would ask that you um, give a very short, very, very short period of time with no further, no extensions on that, and that the standard language you would normally give. Thank you. Uh, board members, suggestions on this? Thank you, Ms. Aston. The, the the property it's to condemnation correct correct so it so it needs plans I would assume no it mr needs. chairman mr chairman this is as a residential structure they can submit a rehab plan okay under our residential rehab plan and uh, I'd also like to remind the board that if the board denies time and remands it back to the Department of Building and Housing it still does not prevent them from pulling permits and repairing the property. 
Uh, and our, tip, our our standard policy is if permits are active and work is progressing, then under the Residential Code of Ohio, we will continue to allow the work to progress to get the property um, completed. So there's no risk in remanding it back to the Department of Building and Housing as far as I see it. Okay, so they, they can expect of, of like six months if they make good progress to continue to be able to make that progress. And Providing they, they pull the proper permits, correct. Right. Mr. Chairman to the appellant. Mr. Maskey. Um, do you have the finances to begin this work? Yes. So I would make a recommendation, Mr. Chairman, that we give them 30 days to submit a rehab plan and then let the rehab plan take over and failure to meet the 30 day submission, then it gets remanded back to the city of Cleveland. I have a question. How do I go about getting a rehab plan? Uh, the rehab plan is a, is a dated plan stating uh, that you plan to do certain uh, you can correct me, Mr. Van Orr, but you, you plan to have certain uh, work done at certain dates and so that the, the city can review that and see that you're making progress or not. And you just show up with that. It in indicates also your knowledge of what you're getting into for the city to review and and uh, judge. So that's your re your rehab plan isn't necessarily a full set of plans. It's it's. It's a description of work effort. Mr. Chairman, the, the, the requirements for pulling permits and making application, including this rehab plan, are all posted on the City of Cleveland website, um, City of Cleveland Building Department Forms and Publications page. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Mr. Gallagher. Uh, Mr. Right. Um, you know, this is one of them situations, though, where they own other properties, and surely I'm, I'm surprised they don't know what to do uh, in this situation. So this is a business. Uh, this isn't just like a single property owner that's fixing up their own property, and uh, you would think they would want to get this done and, and get it either rented out or whatever whatever they do with them uh, or sell it, but uh, it it's just... Uh, I mean, I would, I would be, you know, I'm leaning hard to to what Tom's saying, but and I would agree, you know, um, I guess with uh, with Mr. Maskey also, but uh, it it's got to be like real short and tight, whatever we're gonna do, and I would, I personally wouldn't have a problem just remanding it because of the situation. Um. I think, and the property is in serious decay. If we do that, Mr. Danover has stated, it doesn't jeopardize them from continuing if they make a good effort to uh, re, re, re mand to uh, uh, renovate the property. Uh, I could support Mr. Gallagher on this. I could support both of you on this. <laughs> okay, we'll make that motion. That's what we're here for. All right. A, a motion is ordered to deny additional time with the understanding that the property can be submitted for rehab and and will be reviewed closely and with with tight time constraints. Um, motion so in order. So move. Motion, Mr. Bradley. Second. Second by Mr. Maskey. Mr. Maskey. Yes. Mr. Bradley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Sepik. We're all set. Thank you. Next, next project, docket A7620, 4426 West 48th Street. Application of fees are in order. Notice the violation of exterior maintenance. Issue February 12, 2020. Appeal statement received March 12, 2020. Requesting for time to abate the violation. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing. Patricia Ashton Law, the appellant, has been properly notified and has not responded to the notice. 
Ms. Aston? If you could swear in Mr. Vanover first, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay. <laughs> Solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make the truth, the whole truth, or nothing but the truth to help you guys. I do. Mr. Chairman, thank you preliminarily to Ms. Davis. Ms. Davis, was the notice of today's public hearing or any of the three as the previous people have been testified returned to the board file for any reason? No. Okay. Uh, and did, Mr. Chairman, to Ms. Davis, did you receive any communication from this appellant via email, fax, phone call, voicemail, et cetera? No. So, Mr. Chairman, it appears that you have the due process right to uh, um, proceed as a uh, notice was sent out and has not been returned and no uh, communication has been received. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And this is an exterior of thank you pictures. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Vanover. So, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, so this is uh, it, it appears 48th and Lorraine Day here at uh, uh, BBS. So, this is all the same neighborhood for the past couple of cases that we've had. Um, as Mr. Maskey stated earlier, it is an up and coming neighborhood. They put a lot of work into it. Uh, this is a very large uh, rental property uh, that has exterior maintenance issues that need to be corrected, should have been corrected and maintained prior to um, the citizens of the city paying an inspector to go out and identify the problems. Um, this is uh, the violation notice that was issued, uh, when was the issue date? So it was started, we started our inspection as, uh, you know, earlier last year. We would ask that you uh, February twelfth, twenty twenty. February twelfth. Okay. Yeah. So we would ask that you uh deny any more time and remand it back. And I'll make my standard statement. This is an investment property. Um for and it those these are these are business opportunities in a neighborhood that stays relatively uh full. So this work should have been done before we got there, because that's the business. And they went through the summer without doing anything. That is correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, from board members? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yeah. Gallagher. Yeah, and those steps are definitely not the code. I mean, that looks dangerous. Uh, well, yeah, that's they need the handrails. Yeah, that, that, I don't even think there, there may not be the code even as the steps are situated, but um, it'll charge itself in the picture, but that, that's your entrance to the home. That's begins at all. So absolutely. I agree. Uh, remand it. Okay. Uh, a motion is in order to deny, deny the request for additional time and to remand the property to the division of building housing for supervision and required further action. Motion. So in order. So moved. Mr. 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 Bradley. Second. Oh, uh, motion, Mr. Gallagher, so and Mr. Bradley. Mr. Mask. Yes. Mr. Bradley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Next item A seventy-seven twenty one fifteen thirty-four Mount Overlook Avenue. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is interior and exterior maintenance. Issue March 3rd, 2020. Appeal statement received March 13th, 2020, asking until August of 2020 to abate the violation. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Ashton Law, and Rose Dorsey. Yes, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to we're ask. Gonna, we're going to swear you in. Just a minute. Uh, solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the I truth. I can hardly truth. hear you. Nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. You're swearing. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I see you. Something's not working. Can you hear me? Ms. Dorsey, can you 
Ms. Dorsey, we can hear you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you a little bit better. Okay, so I think it's your internet connection might be might be breaking up. But Mr. Chairman, you're going to need to swear her in again because she didn't hear you. Solemnly swear, thank you. Solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Proceed. Tell us your story. Can I talk now? Yes. Yes. Okay. The violations that we had on the church parish house there have been repaired. The only thing that we could not do was to get the gutters cleaned out and the painting of the house because of the pandemic. And I wanted to know if we can have an extension until September of 2021. And, and what reason is it for the extension of the, that you've got a whole summer to paint? We did not, we weren't able to get anyone to paint the house in 2020 because of the pandemic. We couldn't get any company or anything to do it. Mr. Fanover, do you have a comment on that? Or Mr. Maskey? That, uh, there's that. Mr. Chairman, so the, um, Thank you. the construction industry is been readily available in, in my experience during the pandemic. And I think uh, giving to September is exceptional length of time. I think this could be resolved sooner than that. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman to the appellate, um, uh, you said that the, everything that is done except for the gutters and for the uh, Painting. painting of the house. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, um, we would not object to an extension of time based on a reinspection by uh, Inspector Davis. Uh, but I do think that September is extensive. That's a six months re six month request for a year old violation notice. Um, we would be willing to split that and give three months to, um, what would that be, May the 1st of June? Okay. Um, to get the gutters cleaned out specifically, because that'll rot your roof, and then to uh, start painting. If the painting is in progress at that time, then the inspect under the inspector's discretion, um, we'll give you more time. But we've got to show that it's going to continue, you know, that it, that it keeps moving. Okay. So, so we don't object to it. Uh, yeah, to a June 1st date. June 1st? Okay. A motion uh, by board members, any comments? We'll go I agree. With a, a motion is ordered to require the the gutter work to be completed by May 1st, 2021, and the painting. And that's for the gutters, May 2021? Yes. And you'll, for the painting, this, and the painting of the house will be till June. Am I correct? And and uh, uh, till June first, twenty twenty one, to complete of the painting. To com to complete the painting. Uh, All right. So in order. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we also want to get a reinspection. Now, okay, now we're asking uh, for a reinspection. Just add that to the motion. Everything else is good. We'll, we'll uh, add a, a reinspection uh, within the next next four weeks. Well, un until March, a reinspection by March first, twenty twenty one. Motion so in order. So moved. Move. Motion, Mr. Gallagher. Second. Second, Mr. Bradley. Mr. Maskey. Yes. Mr. Bratley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Thank you. And thank you. Am I signing off now? Yes, you are. All right. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you. 
Next stock at A7820, 2013 Hood Avenue. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is exterior maintenance issued February 20th, 2020. Appeal statement received March 18th, 2020, requesting for time to abate the violation. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing. Patricia Ashton, Law, with the appellant for docket A7820. Please keep your name for the record. Solemnly swear or affirm the contract of Dr. Maker, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you with that. I do. I do. And and where are we with this? We have no appellant. Uh, can you hear me? Carmelo? We, we have an appellant. Oh, Will you appellant please state your name for the record? Hey, good morning. My name is Heath Tutlow, uh, president of Matthew Walker and Bird King. If you could speak up just did a you, little did bit, you, Heath. Did you get sworn in? Heath? Yes, Heath I did. I just answered the Okay. I did, yes. Okay, Can you proceed with your, with your story. Okay. Uh, I'll begin with a motion to dismiss. Uh, we don't own this property. Uh, we haven't owned it uh, since uh, last April. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman to... Patricia McGinty Aston for the City of Cleveland Law Department, we would ask that you deny the motion to dismiss based upon the fact that they're the ones who filed the appeal. If they did so, in fact, sell the property, they can most certainly withdraw the appeal. Um, Mr. Chairman, to the appellant, uh, when did you sell the property? Uh, D transferred in April of uh, 2020. And Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chairman, to the appellant, since the uh, it, it's owned by an entity and there was a corporate resolution to file this appeal, was there a corporate resolution to sell the property? Of course. Um, well, then you you have the right to withdraw the appeal. It is your appeal, but we are going to ask that the board deny the, the motion to dismiss and um, uphold the notice as properly issued based upon Mr. Uh, Vanover's next testimony because the conditions did exist at the time and the, and the, the entity was the owner at the time, so it was properly I, issued. I haven't heard uh, Mr. Vanover's sworn testimony. He's about to speak. I okay. said in his uh, sub, it, about to speak. Hmm. Also, Mr. Chairman, the, in their appeal, they did not object to the violation notice. But just so you're aware, the, the Mr. Based on Mr. Vanover's testimony next and the photographs, the conditions did exist. Or we're going to argue the conditions did exist, and it would be improper to dismiss it based upon um, any objection to it. We have the property, the, the uh, appeal. On our notice list is Mathers, Walker, and Burke, Inc. Is that the new owner? No. Oh, okay. All right. Are you going to withdraw the uh, – You. what are you going to do in view of what we're telling you? Mr. Chairman, you have to rule on his motion to dismiss. Oh, did you – he wants to dismiss. You you might want to hear from Mr. Oh. Vanover first. No, I want to hear from the, the motion. Also, I haven't <clears throat> heard any opposition party. We, you just heard from their lawyer. You didn't object in your appeal statement, so the, I would argue you waived any objection to the uh, violations uh, because you didn't make them at the time. But uh, Mr. Chairman, if you can hear from Mr. Vanover, who you sworn in. Uh, the photographs are there, uh, and if you could hear from Mr. Vanover in relation to the violations, this upon conclusion, I'm sure. is going to say the violations existed at the time, uh, and the violation was properly issued and served. Thank you. Okay. I think everybody's sworn in. Are they not? Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Tom Vanover, Chief Building Official. Um, so, as uh, Ms. Aston has stated, the notice of violation was um, – issued properly to the owners of the property at the time of inspection. Uh, they were given a compliance time of 30 days that they failed to uh, comply with the notice of violation. They then subsequently flipped the property to another owner. Um, so at this point, the 
uh, order to the order from the director of building and housing to correct violations is prop was properly issued and is properly issued and the appellant um, which is uh, Mathers Walker and Burke Incorporated has been ordered by the city of Cleveland to make corrections to this property. Uh, they still have the responsibility to make corrections to this property under the order that was issued. However, they no longer have the ability because they flipped the property. So at this point, we would ask that you deny any more time. You obviously deny the uh, motion to dismiss uh, because you can't just flip properties to get out from under the violations that you've been ordered to correct and that you remand it back to the Department of Building and Housing um, for further action. I, I still have some comments. Uh, so, so we have challenged the uh, the notice of violation. Uh, we sent that to the appellant uh, or the uh, the building department, uh, uh, Department of Building and Housing. Um, so, oh, also I want to object to to these photographs. Who took these photographs? So the, the photographs were taken by um, the inspector. Okay. Is that Jeff Barkas? Jeff Barkas, correct. Okay, and Jeff Barkas is not here today. I am so speaking on Jeff Barkas' to, behalf. Okay, that's hearsay. I'm going to and it's to, an administrative uh, process. They're allowed to have hearsay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just so you're aware, as the city has argued before, it, uh, the evidence and rule, the rules of evidence and the rules of civil procedure do not apply under Rule One of both in a special uh, statutory proceeding, which this is. These are um, uh, special statutory administrative procedures. They are allowed to present this way, Mr. Chairman. To the appellant, did you subpoena anybody for today's hearing? Mr. Tatlow, did you subpoena anyone? Can you hear her? No. No, you can't hear me, or no, you didn't subpoena anyone. We, we didn't subpoena anyone. Okay. Uh, my my argument is, whoever took these photos, Jeff Barkas, is not here to authenticate the photos, so we don't know. Have to be objection okay. to that, Mr. Chairman. Doesn't have oh, that's to be. Specious. Okay. Now I want to address the the notice. So we'll start with the uh, raising the garage without a permit. Um, we did not own this property for very long. Um, so we got it in on uh, March 19th of 2019, and at the time, there was no garage. Um, it, there, it's a typical Cleveland house. There's a, a paved driveway through behind the house, and at the time we bought the property, behind the house, wow. under the driveway, there was a an enormous pile of rubbish. It was it was. It was awful. It was a uh, consisted of um, a substantial amount of clothes, I mean, uh, more than a, a room full of clothes, many uh, items of furniture, multiple couches, chairs, and also some construction debris mixed in, all in this giant pile of rubbish at the end of the driveway. And the first thing that we did was to have this pile of rubbish removed in accordance with a building code. So we did not raise the garage. Now I want to address uh, the next one we have here is a, a porch railing. Uh, missing porch railing on the second level. Okay, so there are uh, doors on the second level, but that is not a porch. Run that is not on on top of that run roof. There is um, shingles, uh -huh. and when you look at it from the inside of the house, that is not a functioning door. It has been sealed off. That is not an operating porch. Oh. And next we have um, the porch system is in need of paint. Um, I I'm guessing that Jeff Farkas just doesn't like the color of the porch, perhaps. Uh, this is weatherproof. And porch. impugning my inspector. That does, that's unnecessary, sir. Well, I don't see what, what he would, what else would he would be arguing here. There, there is, that is um, uh, weather pressure, weather treated, 
wood. So it is it is structurally sound, it is weather tight, it is in good repair. And lastly is comment. Uh, are you objecting to the uh, are you objecting to the citation? Uh, of course. Yeah. Where, where are you he is, Mr. Chairman. If you could allow him to finish to get through, he has right. the right to make his statement. Even though the city was not served with his objection, he does have the right to proceed, and then I will respond, and Mr. Vanover will respond. But he does have the due process right. Okay. Okay, and and we did send this with the appeal. It's it's written and attached uh, when we sent our appeal paperwork. Um, and then. The last was, uh, it says here, exterior wall siding is loose and or deteriorated. That, that is not correct either. There are two layers of siding, both in good repair, weather tight. There is no, there's no leakage. There's, it's structurally sound, it's weather tight, and it is all in good repair when we own the property, which we do not own. Is there anything else you have to say, Mr. Tutlow, regarding that? The VN. Not, not at this point. Okay, Mr. Chairman, if I may, Ms., uh, if you could, the photograph can go back to the garage so Mr. Vanover can testify. So, Mr. Vanover, or Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Vanover, on behalf of the city, do you see the photograph on the left? Yes. And can you read the date uh, and the address and um, on the photograph into the record? Can you read that? I can read that it's 2013 hood, old garage, raised. I'm having trouble reading the date from this photograph. Yeah, I am too. I wasn't sure if you had that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Go back. No, don't change that yet, please. Um, and Mr. Chairman to Mr. Vanover, is there a portion or any portion of the garage structure in that uh, photograph on the left? Can you describe what's there? There is. What's, what's left is the front wall and appears the side walls of the... Uh, old flat roof uh, garage. So there is some semblance of a garage still standing at the time of this photograph? There is what is the, there is a structure on the property, although in great disrepair, it is still a structure uh, under the residential code of Ohio that requires a permit to remove. And uh, okay. Mr. Chairman to Mr. Vanover, if you could testify to the remaining number two, three, and four, number two, on the violation notice is the front, if we could have the picture of the front of the house with the door that he is objecting to. Um, the porch system in need of paint, the porch railing is broken, and the exterior wall siding loose, et cetera. Um, can you uh, testify uh, to uh, in response to what the appellant has testified to, especially to that egress door, which um, and, and the requirements for closing it off? So, Mr. Um um, Mr. Chairman, to Ms. Aston, in order to require, in order to remove the door from the second floor and to close it off, uh, would require a permit under the Residential Code of Ohio. The records do not indicate that there uh, is a permit. Simply, how are you doing? Simply closing the door, or locking the door, or even screwing the door shut does not satisfy uh the permitting requirements and the plan approval requirements for removing what is currently an exit door or and with um, that and with that not being um meeting the requirements is a porch railing required it is and is one present in that photograph it is not and do you see in any of the photographs present the, where the porch system is in need of paint or the exterior wall siding is loose and deteriorated on any of these photographs uh, I do. The porch railing has been painted, and um, therefore the code requires that if it's a painted surface, that uh, it, the, the paint must be in must not be in disrepair, flaking or chipping. Uh, these photographs uh, show that the paint, the porch rail had been fit, uh, painted, and is now the paint is failing and the wood is rotting. So, Mr. Chairman, based on the photographic evidence, especially of the garage and the requirement of the of the permit, um, the city uh, submits that the objections have no merit. We would ask that you overrule the objections, deny the motion to dismiss. Again, they have the right to um, withdraw their appeal. Uh, Mr. Vanover, I don't know if you have access to either the Citizens Access or the Acela um, on your uh, where you're at right now, but I, I, I will submit that there was 
the, the records will show a certificate of disclosure in March. Um, since so, Mr. Chairman, he can withdraw this appeal <laughs> if they sold the property. Um, but it, if he's going to argue, he can't have his cake and eat it too. So, if he wants to proceed on his appeal um, or on behalf of the entity owner, uh, then the city is going to defend it as properly issued and ask that you uphold, deny, and remand. Uh, or he can withdraw his appeal. He, he cannot have both your, ways. Thank may you. May I respond to your questioning of Tom Vanover? Mr. That's up to Mr. Chairman. That's, he, he has the right, Mr. Chairman, to uh, to ask Mr. Vanover questions. Proceed, Mr. Okay, Mr. Vanover, you're you're commenting on on the second floor door. Um, what on what grounds do you have to to comment on that second floor door and how it was how it it, it is and how it was maintained and how it was. On the grounds that the removal of that door or the functionality of that door uh, requires a plan approval and a permit from the Department of Building and Housing, and our records do not indicate that permit was ever pulled. Okay. Uh, I can tell you that when we bought the property, when we acquired it in 2019, it was already, the door was already sealed over. Uh, we did not do any work. This Are you property? aware that there was an illegal condition on the property when you bought it? What illegal condition are you are you implying? The, the fact that the door that the railing had been removed and the door had never been permitted to be closed off. Are you asking whether we knew it was that way? Well, whether you, I mean, yeah. So you bought the property. Your testimony is that you bought the property with the illegal condition, and you were aware of that. I don't see how we, we didn't make the, the changes to the property. Let's see how that's going. That wasn't his question, Mr. Chairman, to the appellant. His question was, were you aware when you purchased the property of the illegal condition at the property? That was his question. No, we were not. It was a sheriff's sale. That, that's so all he's Mr. asking. So, Mr. Chairman, our position would be that uh, um, as when, you know, when the property is purchased, that the owner at the time has the responsibility uh, to correct violations i mean the, the the logic that it was like that when they got it um isn't sound logic because i'm assuming one could assume based on the time it takes that the rotted uh uh porch uh spindles and uh other okay. conditions on the property also exist what, what are you basing this rotted porch spindles on on that photograph are you telling me that you can tell from that photograph that there are rotting porch spindles can we go back to that Where where do you see rotting spindles here? The porch the porch rails on on the right with the spindles where the is in place, sound and painted. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to object. He may not he may not like the testimony, but the testimony is what it is. He testified that it is not. Mr. Vanover testified that it is. So there's a dispute in the testimony. Going back and forth with him isn't going to change Mr. Vanover's testimony. Okay, Mr. Are Vanover, we, have you been to this property? Mr. Are you are basing it? That you're going to continue use, uh, 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 fixing the property? Hasn't it already been stated that you can't? We cannot. We do not own this property. We haven't for nearly a year. So where are we going? All right. What's the What's the point of this? I, I do. I have no idea. We, it's we, your we, appeal. Okay. Okay. It's, it's your yep. appeal. The point is, you've asked to dismiss it. I'm defending it, and you refuse to withdraw it. So the point is. You want your you want it both ways, and the city is the city's adamant that it was properly issued. Ms. Ms. Chairman, can, can I make a motion? Can I make a motion that I find that this was properly issued, and we can move on and deny the time for additional? Yes, exactly. I want to I want to comment. I, I need I need to make a comment about uh, that he he spoke about the uh, the garage being raised. Photograph. You can't tell. There's there's nothing of a garage there. I mean, there, there may be a. Couple Jimmy, there's things. a roof. <laughs> what roof? You can see. Go back the to the photograph. You can. Go back to that. Blind. I wear glasses, but I'm not blind. Can, can you see through that uh, with a tarp? Oh my lord! Oh my uh, lord! I got a mute. You see a little bit of shingles hanging there. I mean, you see what one. Or okay, two Mr. Chairman, things. can you rule whether or not there's a garage for for this appellant? Here's that there yes, was. Yes, there is a garage. 
You, you call that a garage. Okay. There's no right. room, there's no walls. We can't call it much of a garage. Mr. Um, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, the, the Residential Code of Ohio under the Administrative Code considers this a structure that is covered by the uh, Residential Code okay, and therefore it requires structure. a permit to remove. It, it's it, not it, what it, this it, board it, does. It's not what I do. The Residential Code and the Ohio Administrative Code determine that this is a structure that requires a plan approval and a permit to remove. That 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 is a, a, a piece of a uh, of building that is just sticking up there. That is a okay. hazard. It was re uh, you were required by the building code to remove that. And you're required to the trash on the property. Permit to do it. Rubbish on the property. And Mr. But, Chairman, to the appellant, did you acquire a permit to do so as Ohio law requires? To to remove rubbish from the property? That is, you may call it rubbish, Mr. Chairman. To the appellant, did you? acquire a permit to remove what the photograph currently showing on the screen shows is something there. You call it whatever you want, but Ohio and the city of Cleveland law requires a permit to remove that. And did that's, you so get that fine. permit? And I would imagine that the gentleman that we hired- Can you instruct it, him to answer or just rule and move on? This is being obstructionist. Gonna, I, I would like to rule, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we. Uh, we have sat for the work. long enough. We did not do the work of removing that little piece of thing that's sticking up along with the pile of trash. We hired that out. And I would imagine that the person who removed that cleaned it up and made it in compliance with the building code as it was while we owned it. I would imagine that they got all the permits necessary. You can imagine all you want. Ohio and city law requires that the okay. uh, property owner be responsible. City moves that you deny the motion to dismiss, uphold the notice of properly issued, deny the further appeal and remand the building and housing. Am, Thank you, Mr. I Chairman. I am going too soon. A motion is in order to find that the, pro that the violation of notice was properly issued based on testimony and photographic evidence uh, and the property is uh, uh, and and the, and we uh, we are denying any additional time on the abatement of the violations. The properties met three times with this building housing for supervision and required for their actions. Motion so in order. Second. Motion by Mr. Gallagher, second Mr. Maskey. Mr. Maskey. Yes. Mr. Bartley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. I have a makeup call for you, Mr. Bradley. Yep. Okay. Next docket, A7920, 10724 Gooding Avenue. Application of fees are in order. Notice of violation is exterior maintenance. Issued February 10th, 2020. Appeal statement received March 11th, 2020. Requesting for one year to abate the violation. Present for the hearing, Tom Hanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Ashton Law. With the appellant for docket A7920, please state your name for the record. The appellant, the Gooding Avenue, the Gooding Avenue appellant, can you hear us? Was if you present? could swear in Mr. Vanover, Mr. Okay. It doesn't appear they're listed on here. Solemn swear or affirm from the comments you're about to make of the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Okay. Uh, Crystal Bivens and Larry Reed, you're not present, correct? I don't see their names listed unless they're calling to. Um, Mr. Chairman, to Ms. Davis. Uh, was the notice of today's public WebEx hearing returned to the board's file for any reason whatsoever? No, it was not. This president was properly notified. They did respond to the hearing and they did receive the link. As to why they're not present this morning, I have no idea. Okay, so you, they did respond, so they con that was my next question. Can you explain to the board what that response was? Did they uh, tell you they'd be present? They requested the hearing link, and those links were sent out Monday evening. Okay, so they did request the link. Mr. Chairman, if we could, um, I don't know if you want to hear from Mr. Vanover and hold to, uh, you know, make your ruling and hold adopting it until we give him one more chance, or if you want to just 
continue it and give them one more chance since they did actually reach out and um, uh, contact. That's not usually what happens. So whichever way you choose to do it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are we proposing to continue it to, to contact them and continue it for two weeks? That there? might be the easiest, but that would be, I would I would suggest Carmel to weigh in on that matter. Thank you. Okay. We'll, we'll proceed to docket A8120-11435. East 99th Street. Okay, so we're moving on to that. A81. Okay. Application yes. fees are in order. Notice of violation is interior and exterior maintenance. Issue February 12, 2020. Appeal statement received March 11, 2020, requesting for 90 days to a violation. Present for the hearing, Tom Vendor, Building and Housing. Patricia Ashton, Law. With the appellant for docket A, 8120, please state your name for the record. Um, Amanda Brown, I'm here. We've got you. Thank you. Okay. Solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. I do. Okay. Uh, Ms. Brown, tell us your story, please. Okay, so um, I had a... Um, tenants. I had two tenants living at my, my property. And, um, they were not uh, not pleased with my. They were not pleased with my um, rules about rent and trying to get into the property and paint it. So they called the inspector on me. Both both units called the inspector on me as a way to sabotage my business and for them not to have to pay rent. And so um, the inspector came last year. I had two inspectors. They came. Um, I took the list. I worked on the list. I got everything done. The only thing that I did not get done was the back porch. But within the last week, I bought the materials for the back porch. My maintenance guy is on the premises now. And we're just waiting for the weather to get the back porch done. And it's only cosmetics done. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the um, – the board, the board and the structure of the porch. Let's just get it more sturdy and add some new wood around. And that's it right now. But all the interior I did and both those tenants are out my unit. My unit. Uh, okay. Now, you're, how much time do you think you have? Have you reviewed this with the uh, city so that you know that you're going to be in compliance the next time? Um. Yes, the inspector, she just came okay. um, not too long ago. She went through everything, and this is the only thing that, that needs to get done. Okay. So okay. I just need maybe like three, six more months just to get everything, just to have enough time to get everything done if, if you guys allow it. Uh, Mr. Van, over to you have comments, please. Mr. Chairman, so the uh, inspector does corroborate uh, – um, those events and that she was there and on uh, January 20th. Uh, we do not object to much to more time. Um, are, to the appellate, are these both units full now? Yes. Um, we would ask for a limited amount of time to repair the porch because this is a hazard. Okay. Yeah, I have the material. So, mm -hmm. so we would uh, so so we're looking maybe uh, so we're looking uh, April first. April first to for to the complete, course, yes. which at that point would complete the abatement of the violations. Okay. Okay. A motion. Uh, any comments from board members? Okay. Agreed. Thank you. A motion is urged to grant the appellant until April first, twenty twenty one, to complete abatement of the violations. Motion so in order. So moved. Second. Motion, Mr. Gallagher, second by Mr. Bradley. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Next docket. Thank you. Okay. Next Thank docket. you. A 8220 14915, Lexnow Avenue. 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 Hold on. Can you hear can you hear me? 
Yes, but wait just a minute. Uh, I'm sorry. Carmela, uh, Madam, Madam Secretary. All right, maybe I should just mute, mute the. So what's happening is it's it's like it's almost like you got two connections. Are you on the phone and on the computer? Let me yeah, let me let me mute the computer. Okay. Okay, reintroduce. Docket A eighty two twenty one forty nine fifteen Lucknow Avenue. Miss Davis. Something's going on. He muted the wrong thing. Can can we be heard? Who's Mr. Chairman? This is Patty. If I could suggest you have the appellant state his name and swear them both, swear them uh, him and Mr. Uh, Vanover, and you can proceed. I think okay. she called everything. All right, um, uh, Mr. Patternitty, is that are you? With the... Yes. Okay. Stephen, you're going to have to turn the volume on your computer down as well. Present for the hearing, Mr. Vanover and Mr. Patternitty. Solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Okay, may we hear from the appellant? Mr. Patternitty, can you hear us? Nope. Hello. Hello? Hello? Yes. Steve, okay. We swear him in. Did you swear him in, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear your being can you hear Gee, me? I can't hear a thing. Okay. What's that? Mr. Patternitty, can you hear me? I can hear you on my phone. But when I mute you, I can't hear you on the computer. I'm sorry, let me get away from that. You can't. So, Mr. Mr. Paninetti, you're going to have to do one or the other. You can't have an open line on the computer and an open line on your phone. So, if you can hear on your phone, then turn the volume on your computer all the way down and mute your microphone on the computer. That way you can see it on the computer and then you can just hear everything on the phone. And you should be able to talk into the phone, too, and we hear you as well. He can use the phone, right? Yes, I agree with it. Mr. Patternitty, can you do that? <laughs> okay, okay. You can you hear me now? Yes, and you yes. can hear okay. us? Yes, I can. I apologize. That's okay. Here we go. We're good. Solemnly, here we go. Solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Okay. Uh, tell us what your plans are for your residents. <sighs> okay, um, I've had I've had some work um, completed over here. Um, uh, I have a management company that I have replaced the original one that I had paid eight thousand dollars to do a lot of work on prior, and um, I had. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not real good with this. I need a, a, a little more time to get the done, but um, basically there's some of the stuff for the outdoor, outside things, um, like um, screen doors and some painting of trim and window, uh, storm window repairs. And given the time of year that we're in, it's it's been very hard trying to find anybody to do the work for the outside stuff. Um, there has been a lot of the inside work completed, um, but on reinspection, there's some additional things that need to be done uh, after the work had been been taken care of. Um, so I'm basically looking for maybe um, the end of May to get the outdoor stuff taken care of. And um, uh, that's the, and the rest of the inside stuff, I, I'll get the contractor to work on um, uh, from this time forward. Okay, so you'll have everything um, done by June 1st. 
That's yes, that that it would okay. be my goal here. Um, Mr. Vanover? So, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Paternetti, you so you do not live in this property? No, it's my that was my first house that I bought. And, okay, so and, I will I, I will repeat my statement that you've heard me uh repeat earlier. This is an investment property and you have a responsibility to maintain it before we get there. The citizens of the city should not have to pay inspectors to tell you to do the job that you should be doing already. Um, so that is our position that you should be, you know, these things should have never gotten this bad. First house, last house, it's an investment property. Um, the inspector's notes say that you raised the garage. Yes. Did you take, and, um, and you, and that, as you just heard from the previous, uh, docket, that requires a permit and you have to have a, a demolition contractor, um, or a contractor pull the permit to demolish the structure um, and have it inspect inspected accordingly. Now, the inspector I, does I, report I, that you have corrected um, the smoke detectors and flu issues inside, which is, which is important, but she also indicates that she wasn't able to do an inspection of the second floor. Um, I think June 1st is an extended period of time for uh, work that should have never gotten to this point, and uh, I don't know how many other houses or buildings you own, uh, but the expectation is as an investor in rental property that you maintain them prior to the city having to come out and tell you to do your job. So uh, just to please keep that in mind. Um, I'll defer to the board. Again, I think June 1st is an extended period of time, but I'll defer to the board on more time with the understanding that within two weeks, you'll have a permit to raise the garage. Okay, um, can, I, can I make one comment in, in that I had hired in, in September of 2018, I had hired a company um, and actually paid them over, over $8,000 to make improvements to the place. And, um, Basically, that that let's see, you're looking at that's from Metro Management. That's the second company that um, that replaced them. The original okay. ones. The original okay. company was Fod Real Estate, and and they did not do any of the work that they were supposed to do. They were supposed to make corrections to the garage. They were supposed to have replaced all the storm doors, um, and just none of that work was was completed. And I responses have been nil from them um and and so i'm I, I have a separate thing that i'm trying to do and i'm going to take them to court um uh soon after this because they still yeah the, the things that the, that have been reported as violations i had paid to have corrected um well, before the inspection thank you for that. I mean, so that that is encouraging that you're actually taking proactive steps to maintain your properties and just unfortunately pick the wrong okay. folks to do it. So um, that that is what's expected. So thank thank you for that. Um, I'm trying. Okay, <laughs> and, and, we, and we we appreciate that, and the citizens <laughs> and the neighbors also appreciate that. So that being said, Mr. Chairman, I don't object to more time. Uh, with the understanding of two weeks to pull the demolition permit and then um, defer to the board to June 1st for the abatement of the rest of the violations. Okay. A motion is ordered to require the appellant to re, to re, a motion is ordered to require the appellant to obtain a permit to demo, demo the garage by March 1st, March 1st. Uh, 2021 and to complete all violations by June 1st, 2021. Motion so in order. So move. So move. Motion by Mr. Bradley. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Gallagher. Follow the roll, Mr. please. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Thank you all. Next stock at A8320. Thank you very much. 2406 East 142nd Street. Application and fees are in order. 
notice of violation is interior and exterior maintenance issued on March 4th, 2020. Appeal statement received March 16th, 2020, requesting for time to abate the violation. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing. Patricia Ashton, Law. For the appellant, for docket A, 8320, please state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Cheryl Matthews. Okay. Uh, solemnly swear or affirm the comment. We're swearing you in now. So, solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Okay, Ms. Matthews, tell us the story. First, you have interior and exterior violations. Um, well, I, I, I bought this property sight unseen. I've never seen it. And I had a property manager managing it, and they quit on me. Around that same time that they quit, uh, uh, I contracted uh, a very rare cancer. And I've been pretty much fighting that cancer ever since. I've, I don't have another management company, although I do believe someone's in there renting it, and I haven't gotten any rent in over a year. So I, I don't know what to do at this point. You have people in the property, residing in the property. And I, I believe so, but I, I don't know because I've never been to the property and I don't have a management company and, I, and I'm and i not collecting any rent. Okay, what is your home base? Where, where is your residence? In Tyler, Texas. Oh, boy. Uh, hmm. So you don't have any plans for it, nor are you in the position to make any plans for it. Is that correct? That That's correct for right now. Okay. Mr. Vanover? Well, Mr. Chairman, as much as, uh, you know, uh, we try to be empathetic, uh, I mean, this is a plan to do nothing for a property she's never seen. And uh, so we... I've got nothing to work with. Uh, we would, I had asked it to, uh, you know, there's an expectation when you buy investment property that's going to be maintained. And the uh, city of Cleveland codified ordinances requires by law that there is a custodian uh, within Cuyahoga County to maintain the property, um, which that as based on testimony has is not in place. We would ask that you deny it and remand it back to the Department of Building and Housing. Well, deny, that's a, deny what? Your your uh, well, I, I, Mr. Mr. Chairman, to the opponent, I'm not even sure what the request is. If the request is for more time, um, I, I, need, I do need more time. I need to to get well where I can take care of this. Do you have a date for getting well? Uh, Probably not. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna say six months, maybe. Mr. Gallagher, were you gonna have a comment? Yes. Uh, I mean, a phone call away for somebody to manage it uh, is what I would say. And so uh, she's not able right now. That's what she needs to do. She needs to pass it on. And um, so I would agree with Tom. I think we 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 need to remand it, and then she can still continue to uh, you know to take care of it. Make a phone call, get somebody, a management team, or somebody in there uh, to take care of the situation. That doesn't mean this is the end. It just means that you know uh, we we don't have a plan here uh, by the appellant other than she wants to get well, and I wish her well. That's for sure. But absolutely. Uh, yeah, but I I think she just needs to get somebody in charge here. Uh, I, I agree with you, but I, I have no idea who to get. Well, you're going to have to talk to somebody uh, and, and, and get some help in that area. Uh, but right now, where position we're in uh, is that we're we're going to remand it. And, uh, it, you know, it, it, again, it doesn't mean that, uh, that's the end of it. It just means that, that because we'd like to see it taken care of. I mean, um, you know, that's the neighbors around it want to see it taken care of too. So, uh, 
you know, that'll give you something to work with from there. So, so I need to just get a management company and get them involved in it. Is that what you you're you you have to you have to you have to get somebody like that involved in it. Okay. That's what they do. That's what they do. Okay. Um, a motion is ordered to deny the request for time to abate the violations or amend the property to the Division of Building and Housing for supervision and any required further action. Motion so in order. Right. No. No move. Motion by Mr. Maskey, second by Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Mr. Vanover, did you have a comment? No. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Well, good, good luck. Cheryl. I, I don't know what happened here. What what's going on? You've got to find a Oh, okay. Y'all gonna give me time to find a management company? No. No, no, you just do it. Yeah. Okay. You, you, there's no time. You could find them in an hour. Okay. All right. Thank you're, you. You're in charge. Thank you. Okay. Next topic. What the heck? Can can I be heard? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, next topic. Carmelo. Yeah. Eight eighty four twenty ninety one zero seven Lacey Avenue. Yes. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is unauthorized illegal use. Issued on March tenth, twenty twenty. Appeal statement received March thirty first, twenty twenty. Requesting for time to abate the violation. Present for the hearing: Tom Vanover, Building and Housing. Patricia Ashton Law. With the appellant for docket A, 8420, please state your name for the record. LaShawn Tendo. Okay. That's right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to swear you in now. Solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I yes. do. Okay. This is for illegal use. Um, what are your plans? Uh, do you understand the violation notice? Yes, I do. Okay. What are you planning to do? Uh, basically, um, the housing court inspector called me and told me that he needed to go to my house because my tenant retaliated and said that I had holes all in my house. They were renting out the third property on I mean on the third floor. I'm just I inherited this house from my deceased husband, not aware these people were homeless. They begged to live there. So I ran out the third floor to them not knowing, knowing there was a violation. But they were um constantly fighting and breaking up and tearing up stuff so I asked them to leave. So they called the inspector um to um made these allegations that I had holes all in my walls. When he came, there was no holes in the wall, but he found out they were illegally up there. So I have filed appeal to give an opportunity to go to the eviction court to try to get them out of my home because they were refusing to leave. Eventually, they moved out sometime in March, some weeks after that. So I rectified the uh, situation. They were out of there. It's empty. It's a door up there. It's locked. No one is living up there. I had took pictures, sent pictures to the inspector, and the situation is over. Mr. Vanover? So, Mr. Chairman, to the appellate, um, so it's an illegal third floor rental. And um, in order to, I don't know when it became that, but in order to rectify it, it's more than just closing the doors. Um, you will need, obviously, a reinspection. But you'll need to uh, remove 
any um, conditions that provide that. I, it, it, uh, you know, a kitchenette. If there's a kitchenette up there, or there's nothing, there's, not, there's nothing up there. It's just a one big bedroom. Is all it is. There's nothing. And they just there. rented one big bedroom. What did they use for a bathroom? Downstairs, their mother, the boy's mother, lived downstairs on the first floor. So they used her facility, her bathroom, her uh, the uh, kitchen, and all that. His mother is the one that asked, begged me to let him allow him and his girlfriend to live up there. And then they were fighting and constantly. I was getting paint, um, complaints from my um, second floor ten, tenant, and because they, they was constantly fighting and stuff, so I asked them to remove. So they retaliated and called and said that I had holes and stuff in my walls. But that was not the case. When the inspector came, he didn't see that. He said, "Oh, they up here illegally." If you know, if you're well, yeah, and I understand. I understand how the inspector got there. So now you're at the. So is is the entire property empty? It's empty. Okay. The second it's, it's empty. The first people that go on the first floor, his mother left, gone, and they've been gone. It was, they left like two or three weeks later after. I took pictures because there's no one up there. All right. So, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, to the uh, appellant, at this point, we don't object to two more weeks, two weeks of uh, extension to get a final inspection. You have to have the inspector back out there, and he has to close the violation notice. Pictures alone won't do it. Okay, well, he, I wish he would have told me that because he called me and I, I told him, you know, what I did. I took a picture. He asked for the picture and I sent them to him. I didn't know I had to say, okay, when are we going to set up another date? So I had to call him and say, can we set up another date for you to come out to my house? Yes. Okay, I didn't know. I'm new to this. You know, I'm trying to, I'm learning the ropes here. I'm just trying to help people out. That's all. Okay, anything of March 1st? A motion is in order to grant the appellant until March 1st, 2021, to complete abatement of the violations. Motion so in order. So moved. Motion by Mr. Gallagher. Second. Second. Second, Mr. Bradley. Call the roll, please. Mr. Maskey. Yes. Mr. Bradley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Next packet, A8520, 4284 West 143rd Street. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is exterior maintenance. Issued March 4th, 2020. Appeal statement received April 2nd, 2020, requesting for time to abate the violation. Present for the hearing. Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Ashton Law, with the appellant for docket A8520, please state your name for the record. West 143rd Street, are you there? Okay, were they there? She's there, she needs to unmute herself. Christina, you need to unmute yourself. Christina. Hello? Okay, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry. Christine Jones. Okay, I'm going to swear you in. Solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I help you God. I, I do. do. Okay. Christina, you have violations, exterior maintenance. What are your plans? Um, I've already completed the maintenance on the roof. I submitted a picture there. Um, I, I know that the inspector was out. Um, I completed the porch, the painting. I actually started doing more uh, painting on the garage. I had the hood fixed on the garage. Um, there's some woodwork that needs done on the trim. Um, the uh, and that's it. The only thing I really need to get rid of is the stuff in the um, in the yard. I just spent over ten thousand dollars of on, on property work, getting all my uh, the stuff done. Um, I just need to get rid of that van and that trailer and clean up around the garage. And like I said, some painting. Um, okay. I talked to Charles Davis this morning, and he said, "Huh." 
Go ahead. Christine, do you live here? Yes, I do. The family home. Um, how much and how much time do you need to get this work done? Um, well, as a, maybe three months at tops, three four months by July June. Mr. Mr. Chairman, as an, as, a, as an owner occupied structure, she's making great progress and investing in the home. We don't object to June first to complete the uh, abatement of violations. Okay. <laughs> a motion is ordered to grant the appellant. It, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. A motion is ordered to grant the appellant until June first. <clears throat> excuse me, 2021 to complete abatement of violations. Motion so in order. So move. Motion, Mr. Bradley. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Maskey. Mr. Maskey. Yes. Mr. Bradley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. And that's it. Next item. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, what about what about uh, what the other about, end? Uh, what about? Burwood. Seventy-nine twenty. Uh, a seventy-nine twenty. Do you right. want it? Let's. Well, Mr. Dank. Yes. Um, if they didn't come on, they still have two weeks, you know, uh, to come back and and uh, and like everybody else does. Uh, so if we rule on this, and they're looking for a year, and, and it's not like they're prohibited from doing anything. They can they can take care of it if they want to. But uh, they got two weeks to come back and give it another crack at it, and all we would be doing is remanding it right now. And uh, You'd have to hear from up. Mr. Vanover first, swear Mr. Vanover in and hear from him and his testimony. Oh, okay. Their well, appeal we, statement we, does say that they are asking for 12 months and that okay. they're seniors doing it on their own. But if you can hear from Swear and Tom, call the, call the dock at Swear and Tom. This isn't, this is off the record or not. Yeah, we're going to. Yeah, gonna no, no, I got right. you. Okay. Uh, reopening docket A7920, in fact, opening it. 10724 Gooding Avenue. Uh the swearing people in solemnly swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are <clears throat> nothing but the truth so help you god and it's and it's then suggested that van tom that did, did make you a say yes and yes i do okay mr chairman preliminarily just to to circle that through we previously discussed uh since you reopened the docket um uh, ms davis previously testified to this board that the notice was not returned, but this appellant did respond to her and and the uh, hearing links were sent out Monday. So if you're gonna hear from Mr. Vanover, uh, we should have the board reach back out to them and let them know they could be heard at the end in two weeks. Thank you. Uh, yes, noted. Um, it was, it's been suggested that, that we make a ruling at this time. Uh, I would suggest we make the ruling for six months and let them respond after hearing from Mr. Vanover's testimony, you've not taken any testimony yet. And Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I object to six months. Um, this is a this is a two-family um, rental property that has substantial damage that has been caused to the porches. Um, and uh, it looks like there's some repairs started, but not nearly enough. It's actually leaking through the front porch roof onto the second floor porch. I apologize. I received my updates late, um, but I don't object to more time, but I think six months is unnecessary. I apologize for not asking. It, it does, when we have porch problems, they should be fixed sooner than that. Um, May 1st is May 1st not that's we don't object we don't object to an extension to June 1st Mr. Chairman oh okay uh any comments from board members a motion is ordered to grant the appellant until June 1st 2021 to complete abatement of the violations motion so in order so move second Mr. Bradley second by Mr. Maskey Mr. Maskey yes Mr. Bratley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Okay, next item. Any any more action on the pocket? No. We, that's the only one we had 
Okay. Um, approval of resolutions for the following A20 resolutions 30, 52, 67, 68, 69, 70, 72, 73, and 75. Any additions or corrections? No. Motion, motion for approval as submitted. Move. So move. Motion second. by Mr. Gallagher, second by Mr. Bradley. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Approval of the minutes of January 20th. 2021. Any additions or corrections? Um, no. Motion for approval as submitted. So moved. Move. Uh, motion by Mr. Gallagher. Second, Mr. Bradley. Mr. Maskey. Yes. Mr. Bradley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Any further official business? Hearing none. The meeting is adjourned. I have one comment. I keep getting a, a an echo in my in, in comments back to me. Is that something that can be? Correct? So are you are you just on your phone or, or I mean are you no, just on I'm your on, computer? I'm on an iPad. Okay, so it's just the iPad. So um, the echoes are usually caught. I would like to point out that. We had zero technical problems for Mr. Bradley today, and I think that is a huge victory. Yay! <laughs> um, but the, uh, no, the reality is that if, if people are logged in on two devices, uh, then that will, you'll get the echo. Also, cause like I'm hearing myself, ex myself coming through on one of your computers as well. I'm so what you're hearing your is our audio. I'm hearing your echo too right there, Tom. It's not all the time. And now I hear my echo. Right. So it depends on who's some devices, the way that the microphone and the speakers are set up, that the microphone will actually pick up the speakers. So oh. it's like you talk and it comes through the speaker and then the microphone picks it up and re and, and sends it again. Uh, my, so. money, my money is it's Howard doing that. <laughs> I'm not going to respond to the chat that the that the Maurice player is playing because I'm I'm objecting to the chat, but I hear what you're saying on the speakers because uh, we're we're objecting to all use of the chat, so I'm not even going to respond to the use of the speaker on that. Now, um, Patty, I'm hearing it on yours. I hear it sometimes too, but not all the time. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't so, <laughs> so I mean, so Howard, Howard, mute your. Uh, Mute your microphone real quick. What? Howard, mute. Press the mute button on your microphone. Okay. Okay, now. So so now, yeah, see, I still hear it a little bit. No, I guess not. No. So that's what it is, is, Howard, do you have, you can unmute yourself. Do you have your phone on as well? No, just the. Yeah, so some devices, they'll do that. It'll come through the speaker and hit the microphone again and then come back through. Okay. But I have a section meeting this afternoon. I'll see if it happens again with them because we have a WebEx section meeting. But hey, I, 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 I got to leave. I've got another meeting I'm late for. Okay. Good to see you. Take right. care. Thank you. Oh, one, one thing I would like to say that we should be announcing, and maybe Maurice could do it, but when he comes back, but I really believe that uh, we got to tell people and remind them to mute when they're done talking or when they're sitting there or whatever. They come on and they're not muted and we're hearing all this background. Stuff. I want to know who had the parakeet today. Oh my right. God. You name it. It's, it's something. <laughs> Shut your papers on the cell phone, ringing. Uh, <laughs> well, that was Mr. Bradley. I heard him on the phone. <laughs> 